Hello and welcome to day six of our sixth grade math review. Tonight we are looking at finding the part, whole, or percent if only given two of the three. So remember we're still dealing with the 2017 really start test. Tonight we're starting with number 11. And the question we have before us says that ice cream uh, student customers at ice cream shop take a survey. The results are, uh, show that there's 144 customers rated the shop as being very satisfactory. So we're going to need to make a proportion here. We just got to figure out where everything goes. This number represented 45% of the total number of customers who took the survey. So what we have is the part. 144 out of the entire total said that they were, they were very satisfied with the ice cream shop. And so we know that that equals 45%. Well, that's not going to help us too much until we change the way that 45% looks. So we're going to do a little bit of conversion real quick. We should know that 45% is the same as 45 hundredths. Because 100% is 1, so 45% is going to be 45 hundredths. And if you're not sure, you can take the decimal. And if there's not a decimal, it always goes after the ones place. And it moves over twice. Once, twice, so boom. 45% is 45 hundredths. Well, 45 hundredths is 45 hundredths. That's the beauty of changing it to a decimal, because now it's really easy to turn it into a fraction based on the place value. 45, that's the hundredths place, so 45 over 100. And now I have a proportion that I could use. So we've got two different options here. We could try to find some kind of equality or some type of way between 45 and 144. If we know anything, multiply by 140, by 45 to get to 144, any way to divide 144 to get down to 45, we could use that um, for an equivalent fraction. But I'm not really sure uh, how 45 would go into 144, and it's not going to go evenly. So when in doubt, we're going to cross multiply. So what cross multiplication says is that the numerator of this fraction times the denominator of this fraction. So 144 times 100. And if we just use our multiples of 100, we know that it's literally just going to be 144 with two zeros. So it's going to be 14,400 equals this denominator times this numerator. So that's going to be 45x. So how does that help us? Well, we're really close. All we need to do is use our properties of operations. We're going to divide both sides by 45. The 45 cancels each other out, and guess what you have? You have x all by itself. So x equals 14400, 14,400 divided by 45. So we are going to have to do a little bit of long division. There is going to be a shorter way that I'll show you, but I'm going to show you the long way first. So let's do it this long way, and it really is this long division. So 45 doesn't go into 14. It will go into 144 once, twice, probably three times. And if it doesn't go three times, then we can always change that. But I think 45 times three, let's see, that's going to be 15, 12, yep, 135. So we got close. Well, we didn't quite get all the way there. So that is going to be 90. Oh, that's nice and easy. 45 goes into 90 twice. So that's 90. Uh, we need to keep up with our zeros. We've got uh, one zero left, so it's going to be 320. So 45 goes into 14,400, 320 times. That is our answer right there. Now, how could we have done that a lot simpler? Well, there's a simpler way that we could have done this with estimation. So 45%. You know what? I'm going to round that up to 50% because that's an easy fraction. 50%, I'm going to say is close, is close to 50%. So that's half, right? So half the people said they liked it. 
and half was 144, right? Or it was actually a little bit less than a half was my 144. So if I wanted to know the total, well, if half was 144, all you needed to do was double that and you would have gotten 288. Now we're estimating here and there is uh, no 288, but as you can see, 320 would have still been the closest answer. So that's a quick reasonableness check of realizing this 45% is about half or about 50%. So if we were to double the 144 or a little bit more, we would get that 288. So that's a lot of work. On our first problem for this evening, let's look at our second problem for this evening. And we're looking at the exact uh, same type of problem, but we just have different amounts. So we've got uh, 90 girls and 60 boys. I'm not sure why they gave it to you like this. What we need to know is there's 150 kids. They just want you to add those two together. Of these, nine girls and three boys right left-handed. So that's 12 kids. So 12 out of 150 kids, it doesn't really matter about the boys and the girls, 12 out of 150 right left-handed. So what percentage? Well, this is going to be uh, probably the easiest one because if you have a fraction like this, a fraction is simply a division problem you have not finished. If you divide up, so if you divide your 150 into 12, you're going to get a decimal. And as we learned before, changing from a decimal to a percent or a percent to a decimal is quite easy. So 150 does not go into 12, which is pretty obvious. We're going to put a zero there and a decimal. 150 doesn't even go into 120. So we are going to need to add another zero. And let's see, 150 goes into, uh, well, let's just, I see this eight here and this five. I know it's not going to be 10. I'm going to just try this eight. Let's just see what this does here. So that's going to be zero. That's 40. And that's going to be 12. So that's going to be my answer right there. So 150 times 8 is 1,200. That's just a pretty big estimate right there. So 150 goes into 12, 0 0.08. So now we have a decimal, 0 0.08, 8 hundredths. And when we want to change from a decimal to percent, you move the decimal twice to the right. You can drop the zeros, and now you just get 8%. So our answer is going to be G, 8%. Now, is there any way we could have done that without all the division? Yes, there is. If you could somehow make this denominator into 100, it would have been a lot easier because then you could just make that straight into a decimal. Well, what can I multiply to get my 150 down to 200? Well, 150 is really just three sets of 50, right? 50, 50, and 50. And if I just take two of those sets then I would get 100. So if I took 150, and if I multiplied it by two-thirds, if I take two out of the three sets, then what I'm going to get is I'm going to get 300 over 3, because you multiply straight across, and that equals 100. Well, if I can multiply 150 times two-thirds, I could do the same thing for my 12, and I can get a proportional answer. So 12 times two-thirds, well, just make this 12 over 1, multiply straight across, you get 24 divided by 3, and guess what 24 divided by 3 is? 8. 8%. 8 so our answer is going to be G. And finally, we have got our third problem for the evening. This is number 15, and quite honestly, this is probably one of the hardest ones just because it is so confusing and the answers are so close to each other. So we have this inequality. X over 16 is less than or equal to 6. Now we need to match that to a word problem. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we are writing the correct inequalities for these word problems. So Jamal divided X piece of paper among 16 students. So we've got the operation here. So I'm going to write that right here. X pieces of paper divided among 16 students, so it's going to be x divided by 16. So far, so good, right? And each student received fewer, so that's going to be less, than six pieces. Well, that looks pretty darn good, except 
it doesn't have a less than or equal to. It just says ref fewer than six, but it doesn't say that they can actually receive six. So I'm pretty sure that's going to be wrong, but let's look at something else here. Jamal plays six cards, X cards, excuse me, in 16 stacks, and there were no more than six cards in each stacks. So it's going to look kind of like the same as this other one. X cards in 16 stacks. And there were no more than six. So it could be six. So it's going to be six or less than six. So actually this B is going to be our correct answer. And that's why I don't really like this problem because A is really too close to it. But no more than six means less than or equal to six. Less than or equal. And that's the big problem is this up here is just fewer than does not include the or equal to. Let's look at C, just to make sure. Jamal separated six shirts into, or excuse me, X shirts into six stacks. Well, that's already a new problem. X divided by six, that's the wrong thing. And each stack had at least 16. So now it's going to be X over six. And actually that's going to be each stack had 16 shirts, right? So we had each Jamal separated X shirts into six stacks. And so that's going to be represented. Those 16 shirts is going to be the number of shirts uh, that are at least in each of these stacks. And it's going to be greater than or equal to this six. Those are the six stacks you're dividing it into. So it does have the correct denominator. It has a an equal to, but it's greater than or equal to, not less than, because each stack had at least 16 or more. And then finally, we have this D right here. Jamal shared 16 markers with X classmates. So now what we're doing here is we're just flipping. We have 16 markers divided by X. So now we flipped it. And then each classmate had fewer than six. So now we're going to have less than six, but just this fewer than doesn't mean or equal to. So that's going to be completely wrong. This was a, a highly missed problem on the 2017 star test. And I completely understand why, because I think this was a strangely worded problem but our answer is going to be B. So that's it for this evening. Tomorrow night, we will look at some more problems and make sure you get on my website, aarondaffron.com, to see the tasks uh, tomorrow morning for day seven.